In this video, I'll be stripping the machine down to its chassis, and hopefully along the way, we'll get to the bottom of the wonky wheel. So let's get started. And the first job is to remove the battery and store it safely out of the way. Next, take out the boot and start by removing a horseshoe circlip under each wheel arch. Then push the wheel arch away from the boot and extract it once free. To remove the left wheel, start by removing the centre cap by pushing it from the inside. Then undo the bolt. And ease the wheel off. Slide off the belt. Followed by the drive gear, taking care not to lose any washers. Moving on to the rear right wheel, again remove the centre cap, then remove the outer nut. Followed by the inner cone nut. Then remove the wheel. Now remove the outer bearing and inspect it. This one looks okay. It's a different story though for the inner bearing. This one's damaged. In fact, four of the nine ball bearings are missing, so that will need to be replaced. Inspecting the rear drum brakes, the pads have got some rubber left on them. I'm not quite sure what a good set looks like. Operating the brake lever doesn't make the pads move very far. If I move the brake mechanism by hand, we get far more travel, so there may be a problem here. Inside the boot area, remove the cover from the control box. This cover is not an original and doesn't fit very well. Hopefully we'll find a replacement for that. And we'll remove the nuts fastening the black and red motor wires. Next, carefully cut the cable ties holding wires to the chassis. And take off the thermal trip switch on the outside of the motor. This just unclips. Then pull out the thermistor from the centre of the motor. Loosen the nut holding the motor. And remove the motor and carefully set it aside. There are many fragile plastic parts on this, so do take care not to damage them. It's looking a bit more spacious in the boot area now. To remove the rear light, start by removing two screws. Gently pull it forward, then work the lamp holder free. Then pull out the lamp and keep it safe to prevent it getting smashed. Take out the two screws that fasten the body shell to the rear metal support or rear location frame as it's referred to in the Sinclair documentation. Remove the bolts left and right that hold the rear location frame to the chassis. Now the rear location frame is free and can be removed. Charles from the C5 user group got in touch to say that the frame was incorrectly installed. The metalwork should sit inside the plastic body shell. Next, remove the middle bolt from the motor support. And then this metal bracket. 
Then take out the right side front axle bolt. Remove the rear brake cable from the fitting. And now you're free to remove the fitting. Rotate the chain to locate the split pin. And use some needle nose pliers to straighten it out. And then remove it. Now remove the chain link and the chain comes apart. Note the link is flat on one side. And remove the final bolt from the motor support. You're now free to remove the rear axle. You can now slide off the motor support from the axle. And rotate the sprocket and freewheel to check it's free to move. Back in the rear compartment, remove two screws either side of the control box. And take note of the two plastic inserts in the chassis. We'll remove them later. Next, pull off the foam steering bar cover. And roll back the rubber steering bar grips. On the left side, this will reveal the motor power switch. Remove the bolt fastening the brake lever. And remove the brake lever. Now do the same on the right side. Disconnect the power switch by pulling the connectors apart. Remove the long bolt in the centre of the steering bar. Now the advice at this point is to use the bolt to bash out the nut underneath. I didn't have much success though. So I remove the bolt, then turn the machine onto its side. By reattaching the bolt from the underside and giving it a waggle and a pull, it came free. Now you're free to work the steering bar loose and pull it upwards. Remove the access covers to the crank axle on the right side. So now we need to use a cotterless crank removal tool. One end is used like a socket set to remove the recessed nut. Then we remove it and turn it round. We screw it onto the pedal. Then we rotate the inner part which pushes against the pedal crank to push it off the tapered axle. OK, so here we go with the tool on the C5. First removing the nut using the socket shaped end. Then we remove it and turn it round. We screw it onto the pedal. Then we tighten the inner part to push the crank off the crank axle. And it's the same process on the left pedal. First of all, removing the nut. Reversing the tool and forcing the crank from the crank axle. And noting the pedals are marked left and right. Back on the right side, we need to knock the black plate clockwise to unscrew it as it's a left-handed thread. And then slowly extract the crank axle complete with bearings for each pedal. Then a check of the bearings on the axle. 
Next, we remove the four screws holding the canopy to the chassis. Unclip the front wheel cover. Next, remove the front brake cable by unbolting it from the caliper. Finally, we're free to remove the canopy, having made sure that there are no cables or cable ties in the way. At this point, I realised that in unscrewing the canopy, the chassis dropped onto the workbench. This meant that the chain tensioner seen here got squashed. In future, I'll remove the chain tensioner earlier on. With the tensioner reattached, you can see it working. To safely remove it, you can just pull it downwards, then remove the plastic parts for safekeeping. With the workbench out of the way, we can see we're nearly there. So next, we remove the front wheel using the two bolts either side. And give the front wheel bearings a check by rotating the wheel. To remove the front brake caliper, remove the nut at the rear. And we're very nearly finished. To remove the front forks, we start by removing the large nut on the top. Then the washer with a groove, followed by another nut. This one is just finger tight. Now with a hand on the forks, Pull the chassis upwards, then tilt the forks back to disengage the steering rod and note the positions of the two bearings. In the centre of the chassis, remove another large nut atop the steering bar. And another grooved washer. And another round nut. Again, this one was just finger tight. This reveals another bearing. Lift off the chassis and remove the bearing. Disengage the steering rod. Back to the chain tensioner. And we disengage the spring from the chassis. Now we'll remove the nut on the left side into which the pedal crank axle is fitted. This one has a right hand thread. To deal with the four captive nuts, two at the front and two at the back, insert a flat blade screwdriver in the inner part and pull it outwards. You can then slide the capture nut upwards and remove the two plastic strips. These help protect cables from getting damaged by the chassis. Pull out the cable tie base from the center of the chassis. And finally, we'll deal with the two plastic fixing points into which the control box is screwed. Just pinch and pull these out with a meaty pair of pliers. And that's it. There are still a couple of metal inserts in the forks and steering bar, but I'm going to leave those in place. The good news is that the chassis is in pretty fine condition, with only a few spots of rust here and there. Now, my goal is to restore the C5 as well as I can, so I'll be sending it off to get blasted and powder coated, and we'll see the results in the next video. I'll also be cleaning up the body shell, dealing with the brakes and tyres, and trying to get the machine back together again. Bye for now.